Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Rick Kelly. Am I immune to COVID-19? In this video, I'll try to answer the question that so many people have right now. I'll talk about what we mean by immunity, and also touch on how immunity works, and then I'll share some studies that I believe are relevant to this topic. And then finally, I'll tell you what I think it means based on our current knowledge. If you stick around to the end, I'll touch on a few things that interfere with your immune system and make you more susceptible to disease. If this is the kind of content you like, please put one of two words in the comment section below, either natural or vaccine. Oh, and hit the like button. When people talk about immunity, they often think of it as a black or white issue. Yes or no, immune or not immune. Some people may think biological immunity is like legal immunity. A person that's been pardoned is immune from prosecution for crimes they previously committed. A diplomat may have diplomatic immunity, preventing prosecution for misdemeanors for minor offenses. But when it comes to organisms, the immunity is less absolute and more a spectrum. I'm going to spare you the details of the intricacies of the immune system, which is very complex and functions in ways that we still don't completely understand. There are many videos available online, if you're interested. But in brief, we want to focus on the part of the adaptive immune system that gives us acquired immunity to a specific pathogen, instead of general, nonspecific protection we get from our innate immunity. This acquired immunity involves the actions of a series of different types of white blood cells, including T cells, macrophages, plasma cells, and B cells, which make antibodies, as you likely know, antibodies are the proteins in our blood that bind the invader or toxin entering our body, telling our adaptive immune system what to attack. So we have an infection or get vaccinated, and then we're good, right? Well, as most of you know, the answer is yes, but for how long? If you consider diseases that we now are vaccinated against, we realize that some vaccines appear to work much better than others. Immunity to measles and hepatitis B seems to be lifelong after vaccination or disease. Also, many traditionally said that immunity to chickenpox was lifelong, but that lifelong immunity was actually due to one or more unrecognized, what we call subclinical infections, while an adult due to exposure to sick children or grandchildren. We know this from a study done in the 80s on the blood of people who were exposed to chickenpox as an adult. They showed a rise in antibodies after being exposed, although they had no apparent recurrence of chickenpox. So now it's felt that chickenpox vaccination provides immunity for 10 to 20 years. In the U.S., we get a series of DPT vaccines as a child, diphtheria, pertussis, or whooping cough, and tetanus. Immunity from diphtheria lasts about 10 years pertussis between 4 and 20 years, and tetanus 10 years. That's just a few examples, but there are many others. But they all vary based on the body's ability to maintain the immune response and the pathogen or virus's ability to mutate so that it can partially or completely avoid our defenses. When either of these things occurs, then our immunity wanes and we are less protected. Think about the flu. A new vaccine is offered every year that has three or four different variants or strains of the influenza virus. This is done hoping to provide protection from the currently circulating strains. Our immunity is not waning in that short time, but the virus is mutating to a variant that we are less able to fight off. Then consider the common cold, which is mostly caused by rhinoviruses, but also by adenoviruses and coronaviruses. There are an estimated 200 or more strains circulating around, and scientists haven't been able to come up with something that will provide wide enough immunity against this vast number of pathogens. But Dr. Kelly, I'm not interested in all that. I want to know how well protected and how long that protection will last after having COVID or being vaccinated. The fact is that though we have no shortage of virologists, immunologists, epidemiologists, and politicians on TV telling us what they think is going to happen, much of what they say is conjecture, and what we know or think we know this month may change due to new information, three, six, 
or 12 months from now. First, I want to talk about a study put out by the Cleveland Clinic Online earlier this year. I'll provide links to these studies in the comments below. This article was not peer-reviewed or at the time of its release, and as far as I can tell, it still has not been released as peer-reviewed. But the study title, Necessity of COVID-19 Vaccination in Previously Infected Individuals, speaks exactly to the question that many people have. Do people previously infected with SARS-CoV-2 need vaccination? In this study, on December 16, 2020, which was before the emergency use authorization of the COVID vaccines, over 52,000 employees of the Cleveland Clinic system were enrolled and tested to see if they had previously had COVID. Then they were followed over the next five months. Among those who had previously had COVID, about half subsequently got, va subsequently got vaccinated and half did not. Over the next five months, there was no difference in reinfection rate, which was basically 0%, in either the previous infected but vaccinated versus the previously infected but unvaccinated. So when this study was released, many people, myself included, felt like having COVID would provide natural immunity for some unknown amount of time. Some experts said that it could be four or five years. The strength of this study is in its size and design. However, limitations of the study are the short length of the study, and it was done pre-Delta variant. Finally, it is still in a preliminary form, not peer-reviewed. But what it does seem to tell us is that over a period of five months pre-Delta, the natural immunity from having COVID was equal to that of COVID plus vaccination. It doesn't say whether one is better than the other. Next, we have a report from Public Health England from June of 2021 titled New National Surveillance of Possible COVID-19 Reinfection. They published population surveillance data on possible coronavirus reinfections in England. England has a high level of genetic sequencing of the SARS-CoV-2 infections to identify the variants that a person has. Of nearly 4 million people with confirmed COVID-19, they identified almost 16,000 with possible reinfection, which is approximately 4 in 1,000 reinfected. These are reinfections that had not been sequenced, so they couldn't say they were not the same as the original infection. Then they had 478 probable reinfections, which were sequenced and found to have a variant that was not circulating at the time of their original infection. This comes to around 1 in 100,000 reinfection rate. Thirdly, 53 were confirmed reinfections with sequences showing different variants in the initial and subsequent infection, which came to about 1 in 100,000 reinfection rate. It seems that the possible reinfection is much closer to the actual number, but it's still in the pre-Delta studies, and the numbers are quite small. Next, another large study, this one done in Qatar and published in the AMA Journal Online, is of over 260,000 passengers that arrived at the International Airport in Qatar between February 18th and April 26th, 2021. They had recorded their vaccination status or past COVID infection, and every person that arrived was tested using PCR. Of the group that was fully vaccinated, 0.82%, or just less than 1%, tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. Of those unvaccinated and no history of infection, the number was 3.81% that were positive. Then of the group that had previous COVID, but no vaccination, the positivity rate was 1.01%. There are different opinions regarding the false positive rate and whether these positives are asymptomatic, pre-symptomatic, or just overly sensitive PCR testing. However, the positivity rate is full of the fully vaccinated and the previously infected group was very similar compared to the unvaccinated group. The last study out of Kentucky reported recently in the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Report from the Centers for Disease Control. This report widely reported in the media that people who had COVID but were not vaccinated were two times more likely than those fully vaccinated from getting COVID breakthrough. 
I'm not going to go through the numbers, but I will note, as others have, that the study authors themselves state that there were at least five limitations or weaknesses to this study, a few of which are the lack of integration between vaccination databases, being a retrospective study, possible biases due to vaccinated subjects not getting tested for COVID, as well as the data only over two months in one small state, and I might add pre-Delta. I'm not sure how much weight we can put on this study. I do agree with one of the final statements that, that says all eligible persons should be offered vaccination. If you want to read more, I'll give you the link below. So what does all this mean to you and me? All the evidence that I have seen shows that if you have had COVID or been fully vaccinated, it greatly decreases your chance of severe disease, hospitalization, and death. But how long will it last or will COVID go away? I have to say, I don't know. I don't think we know. I believe the answers would be a lot clearer if we were still dealing with the strain of COVID from Wuhan, China, but the Delta variant is different and we have very little published, peer-reviewed, real-world data on its consequences. We know this immunity is waning over the past six months, either due to viral mutations, but also due to decreasing antibody levels. We know that hospitals and ICUs are again filled with COVID patients, at least in parts of the U.S., and that 95% of those admitted are unvaccinated. But no one knows what will happen if we have a different variant next year or the next. But if you've been vaccinated or have had COVID and have a healthy immune system, you have some acquired immunity. Unfortunately, we really don't know how long that will last. We may need an annual booster as we do for the flu. We'll just have to see what the evidence is as the time comes. Our hope is that we can continue to find ways to help our bodies fight the infection and the future mutations will make the SARS-CoV-2 virus less virulent. As I mentioned, there are things that we do that suppress our immune system and make us more susceptible to COVID or other diseases. These include excess stress, some medications, not controlling our blood sugar, and not getting adequate vitamin D, C, or zinc smoking, excess alcohol, a diet high in processed food, and even a lack of exercise. There are others, and there are also things that we can do to help improve our immunity. I hope to make a video on these soon. I want to thank everyone for watching and those who have subscribed and commented. I really appreciate it. Thank you and be well.